the last day of February witnessed both the sitting president of the United States, Joseph Biden, and the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, each taking a trip to the U.S.-Mexico border to address the crisis that exists there. Now, according to reports, 7.3 million migrants have illegally crossed the southwest border since President Biden took office in January of 21. And think about this. That's larger than the population of 36 individual states, including our own state of Maryland. So, uh, so the issue about illegal uh, immigrants coming to the United States is also wrapped up into the crime issue. Nancy, in 2019, just as executive, County Executive uh, Mark Elrich became executive, he said at the time, he designated Montgomery County as a sanctuary status. And he said at the time, we don't interact with ICE. You know, is it time to make a change there? Because the immigration system, uh, ICE, the enforcement agency, has 119 detainers in this year alone to uh, detain individuals who have been arrested in Montgomery County for crimes and are in jail. Is it time to change the law or the status, I guess? No, I think it's pretty two-faced of the Republican Party uh, to make this an issue at this point in time when you're holding up funding on Capitol Hill to address a lot of these issues. You know, I saw uh, a story on, I think it was 60 Minutes so a couple of weeks ago that showed a hole in the wall and a stream of uh, people coming through it in Texas. Uh, and they were actually all Asian people. They weren't, you know, people from uh, Central America. So I think everyone agrees there's a problem and nobody wants to spend the money, I guess, to address it. That You all want to make it some kind of political issue for next year. Uh, we have it uh, this fall. This is an issue right now. There's no question about it. And the question about sanctuary says, who's going to pay? Are, are local governments supposed to do the Fed's work? That's what that's all about. And why should we? They should be doing it, it's their job. They just don't want to, they don't have the resources and they want local governments, your local tax dollars, that should be focused on other things uh, to implement uh, federal regulations. That's not how it should be. And uh, you know, with, the county complies with what it needs to do uh, under national federal law and that's okay, that's all right. And I don't think there's any question about it. But we're not going to, this is not, a, has, well, doesn't well, the, have anything the, the, the to do real, with local but, crime. Yes, it does. Because if there are 119, so in, the if there are 119 individuals that are in our jails and ICE issues a detainer, Montgomery County should at least honor that detainer. Stacey, I gotta, I'm going to go to you on this. So with all due respect to Nancy and her opinion, she's just wrong because Biden rescinded a bunch of executive orders on day one in office. And that border was essentially under control with a minimal amount of people coming over and they had to stay in Mexico if they were applying for asylum. Yeah, I, and I, and I, realize, I realize that. Let's but focus on forward, Montgomery County. Yeah, no, but moving forward, what I'm saying is she mentioned the, the bill, you know, that or, okay. or the fact that the Republicans were That's obstructing fair. the bill. But it was a complex bill. We need to secure our own border first. And here in Montgomery County, to your point, that the, the county executive made the decision, it was Isaiah Leggett back in 2014, to decline, detain, to decline the detainer list. And now all of a sudden that we've got this surge in crime, they're reevaluating this. It's unclear what will actually end up happening with it, if they'll get hard on it or not, because it's not their style. So we are all, this community, our communities are all at risk, not just for hard crime, soft crime as well. Very briefly, I will tell you, you know, I'm a realtor. I do a lot of business in this one complex, uh, condo complex up in Gaithersburg. I have out of town sellers. I went to one of the units last month. We um, were going to get ready to put it on the market. It was an illegal immigrant in there and she is um, running an illegal daycare center. Um, she subletted the apartment from somebody else. She had 12 children in there under the age of three in a one bedroom apartment with a pet rabbit um, and a, a, an unauthorized hammock hanging from the ceiling. So this, she was, she doesn't speak English. What if ha something happened? So these are kind of the soft crimes that are going on that we don't even know about, um, you know, publicly, but if there was a fire, she could have never gotten all those children out of there. 
Never. It's it's we really have to crack down to Nancy's point. We don't have the money to take care of all these people. They're going to be taking care of themselves in ways that are potentially illegal and harmful. So, Nancy, um, I, 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 I know you want to respond to this, but let me let me, you know, the, the this week, ICE officials met with Montgomery County uh, officials as well to discuss the detainer issue. Uh, it, do you think there's going to be any change in 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 the in that status going forward? I don't think there is the problem uh, that you're identifying. I don't know all the facts, but I do know that if a detainer is properly issued at the proper time, the county has gone along with it. So I think the the real issue may be a communication problem. Uh, Montgomery County understands that. Uh, what the rules are and what the rules are not, and it has the right uh, to spend its money the way it, it, it needs to uh, under the current situation. So the idea of doing extra work for the feds is really what it comes down to. That's the policy issue. And I ask you, uh, federal enforcement should be handled by the feds. And frankly, uh, to Stacy's point, if someone is running an illegal business and illegally, they should be uh, punished just as well. I suppose Stacy reported this person. Did you, Stacy? Um, I have a fiduciary obligation answer. to take care. Of them. Did you? Can you answer my question? I'm sure you did not, because uh, that would have Nancy, I, Nancy, I have a fiduciary obligation to my client to report it to her and let her make the decision on it. So that was not up to me. But, so, then, yeah. but then she took appropriate steps. So the, you know, but that's what I'm saying. These are soft crimes that are going on that we you just don't know about. But people are being harmed. And uh, to your point, yeah, great. Ask the federal. Um, you know, you're asking the federal government to provide money for this. Why don't you just do the job and shut the shut the border down? Well, you know, that's a that's a bigger issue that we can't can't okay. decide on right okay. now. I'll tell your friends on Capitol Hill to stop behaving. Well, start behaving. Well, like you know, that. look, you know, there's 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 two sides to this coin. Um, there, you know, there is there is existing law, Title Eight, uh, Section Two Twelve F, gives the president. The uh, you know the authority to deny entry to any individual. So there is existing law. We don't want to ignore existing law. We should enforce existing law. And President Biden, I believe, should have the uh, authority to act if he chooses to do so.